as the world celebrates the dawn of a new year, 2020. The World Health Organization, WHO country office in China, is informed of a cluster of cases of a pneumonia of unknown cause in Wuhan, Hubei province. The symptoms include shortness of breath and fever. A novel coronavirus was eventually identified. On 30 January 2020, following the recommendations of the Emergency Committee, the WHO Director General declared the novel coronavirus outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. Zimbabwe reported its first COVID-19 case on 21 March 2020. As of 31 October 2022, the country had experienced four main COVID-19 pandemic waves and had recorded a total of 258,169 cumulative number of cases, including 5,610 deaths. In responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of Zimbabwe in partnership with all sectors, stakeholders, and civil society, showed the highest level of commitment and laid a foundation that enabled a government and society response, distinguishing Zimbabwe as a leader and fast mover in the region. The response to the COVID-19 pandemic was coordinated through a national task force from the Office of the President and Cabinet. Through a multi-sectoral approach, the government of Zimbabwe led an effective, well-coordinated and robust response to the COVID-19 pandemic. While many constraints and challenges were encountered along the way, ultimately, many lives were saved. Crisis response strengthened, valuable lessons were learned, and under the government of Zimbabwe's steady leadership, the nation has emerged today better prepared to handle the next emergency. Two years later, this is the story of how a nation came together to fight and overcome COVID-19, one of the biggest health crises history has ever seen. The government of Zimbabwe declared the COVID-19 pandemic a national disaster on 17 March 2020. Let us continue to social distance, to wash our hands with soap and running water, and to sanitize our hands with alcohol-based sanitizers. We must all feel the age and the responsibility to protect ourselves, our families, our neighbors, and thus our nation. March 2020 was really a, you know, a frightening time. Uh, although by, by the time that uh, WHO declared uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, many countries, including Zimbabwe, were already at full throttle in terms of preparing for the, for the pandemic. Uh, I recall that uh, uh, the pandemic was declared on the 11th of uh, March 2020. Zimbabwe had actually started preparing uh, to respond to this pandemic from end January 2020. Just before the pandemic hit us, uh, when I was Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Child Care, we had set our target as a universal health coverage and we were working very hard to strengthen our health systems so that we're able to reach that target. And in that strengthening of health systems, we specifically focus on uh, building the systems that would enable us to manage uh, epidemics, outbreaks, pandemics, and so on. So we're working very well towards that. So when the pandemic hit us, we said, ah, wow, we're already on the right path. We're not changing our priorities. We're going to continue strengthening those health systems. But we're now just going to not only focus on the outbreak and uh, pandemic uh, strengthening uh, in terms of response, we're going to now also ensure that our specific planning for COVID-19 uh, and, of course, uh, resource mobilization was very much stepped up. We had to put the whole society uh, to be part 
of mechanisms we are going to put in place to fight this pandemic. So, uh, His Excellency the President called for a meeting of all who could come from business, civil society, but the Minister of Health and Child Care remained at the core of making sure that everybody survives. On the 27th of March, the uh, cabinet made a decision that uh, there must be a command center. A command center which was to do the legwork for all the eight subcommittees. The creation of the COVID-19 command center was a result of realizing that uh, there were certain things which were not necessarily uh, of a health nature. Uh, you could not then afford to deploy your health practitioners in doing certain logistics. So the command center was then created. Misinformation and fake news was a serious challenge throughout the pandemic, with many citizens holding misconceptions about how the COVID-19 virus was transmitted. There were so many things coming up, not just coming from locally, but internationally. There was so much on social media and that would confuse people. But as a, as a ministry, our job was to make sure that we take all the information which is coming from World Health Organization, from our government, and all the precautionary and preventative measures which were put into place, we would then put that to the, to the, to the masses, to the communities, through all channels. According to a May 2021 United Nations Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, report on education, COVID-19 affected the learning of millions of children around the world. Schools must prepare to open and they put in place measures which observe the World Health Organization protocols and the national COVID-19 guidelines. Virtual learning or long distance learning is encouraged where possible. Universities and colleges must also prepare to open and ensure compliance with the World Health Organization protocols and the national COVID-19 guidelines. Virtual learning or long distance learning is equally encouraged where possible. Zimbabwe is a very interesting country in the sense that when we have a COVID-19 pandemic, like every part of the world, we close schools because we're trying to figure what to happen. But I think we should give credit to the Ministry of Health and also the Ministry of Education for a unique partnership that is rare to find anywhere in the world. Number one, the Ministry of Education and Health put together a response plan for the COVID response in school. The Ministry of Health established what we call a rapid response team that goes to school in case there is a COVID outbreak and respond with it the Ministry of Education opened their door to allow that kind of engagement and interaction to care for kids and parents in school because the Ministry of Education was particular about continuity of learning. But they didn't stop there. The Ministry of Education introduced a lot of innovation into how children can continue to learn even with all the disruptions from COVID. They introduced TV lessons, radio lessons, digital lessons, they train teachers to live with these new areas of work. It's clear that this government of Zimbabwe did all, most of the heavy lifting in terms of funding the requirements for the uh, pandemic response. 84% uh, uh, of the resources came from uh, government, which is 305 million US dollars, and only 15% came from, from, from our partners. We thank the partners as well, but it's clear that government had to be ready financially for this to be successful as, as, as an intervention. In 2019, we had some uh, resources uh, uh, after the year, uh, a surplus of about 100 million US dollars. So we're able to deploy this to acquire the vaccine early. So, so, so we've been, we're very systematic in our vaccination procurement program and even helped other countries. Uh, you know, uh, transport some vaccine, vaccines, even made donations 
uh, to other countries in the, in the neighborhood. So this was a very successful vaccine acquisition program as part of the whole overall response uh, to the pandemic. When we saw that there were a lot of people coming to Wilkins, we could not cope with the teams. I think at one time we had about seven teams. Uh, we couldn't cope. So we, we, we started to go to workplaces to vaccinate in workplaces like you know, the, 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 the government departments, there were some parastatals and some companies. So we were going there to decongest our, our facility, our Wilkins. And uh, we were also making sure that our vaccines are, are available uh, because uh, the, the demand was just uh, too much, it was very high. In line with the government strategy and push towards self-sufficiency and import substitution, local universities and small to medium scale enterprises set up units to produce personal protective equipment and hand sanitizers. And so everybody, even the old women, were sewing masks in their own, you know, you know, the pandemic forced us all to confront the true uncertainty of human existence and the fragility of human life. When COVID came, it did not select. I lost, or we lost, from a church perspective. Uh, ICT represent the apex body of the church. We lost some of the best pastors. We lost ministers in this country, good ministers. We lost good civil servants. We lost good church people. We lost mothers. We lost family, heads of families. The lesson was we need each other. We lost colleagues. I lost teachers, professors who had taught me. I lost students who I had taught. I lost family members. I lost my father-in-law to COVID. In the mortuary, we saw every race. And before COVID, some races had their own mortuaries on religious grounds. COVID was the great equalizer. Everybody with COVID came to one place. Whether you were Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, we all had to follow the same for the very first time. Well, for me, um, the most important lesson that I learned and also learned it uh, with disappointment is that while we have all the evidence, technical knowledge and expertise, uh, misinformation can actually destroy all that. You know, personally, I said, this is my job. If I was in the struggle, it was not a question that, uh, you know, the sun is set. If you had to go and fight the enemy, you, you, you had to fight. Whether you fight the enemy midnight or you fight him at the dawn, uh, you know, you make a dawn attack, you have to do it. So, commitment, hard work, and perseverance. When there's a pandemic, Maybe, first of all, assume you are on your own. Assume you are on your own. Rely on your own capacity. Upscale your own capacity quickly. We didn't know that we had factories and universities and in our high schools to make masks and sanitizers. But there, there it was, that Latin capacity uh, became available and we were able to make use of it very quickly and, and, and effectively. So, so all of that uh, are lessons learned for, for future uh, uh, you know, response to other pandemics uh, going forward. And God forbid we don't get another scare and another surprise going forward. The world has now largely emerged from the COVID-19 pandemic. A sense of normalcy has been restored. Two years on since the onset of the pandemic, our fears and anxieties have subsided. What we have learned as a nation is that by working together, we can achieve anything we set out to do. The government of Zimbabwe, in partnership with others, showed the highest level of commitment to the pandemic response. This commitment delivered from the highest level and inclusive of all sectors of government and society, 
resulted in a robust, well-coordinated and effective response that saved lives across our nation. And though we encountered setbacks along the way, ultimately, crisis response was strengthened, valuable lessons were learned, and under the government of Zimbabwe's steady leadership, the nation has emerged today better prepared to handle the next emergency. This is the story that we will tell generations to come of how we as a nation came together to fight and overcome COVID-19, one of the biggest health crises that history has ever seen. May we continue to forge forward as one nation, united, better prepared, and ready to face challenges that may lie ahead.